If there were any victims out there, I apologize uh, to those victims, if there were any. I was appalled. Quite frankly, I was appalled when, when I saw that because I was the one who was in charge out in El Mirage at the time, reviewed these cases, and sent it to him. El Mirage decided they wanted to have their own police department again. And so they announced to the sheriff uh, in mid-2007 that they were going to do that. That's how this whole thing started. They wanted to give us all these police reports back from when they had been providing police service in El Mirage. The information that we got from the deputy chief uh, who was making these arrangements were that all of these cases were done and all you guys needed to do in El Mirage was file them. So I directed my uh, detective sergeant to do just a random sampling of those cases. And remind you, these are all serious cases. These are the felonies. These are from their special victims unit. Uh, child molestings, rapes, you know, those kinds of cases. He pulled two or three out of the first box, looked at them, and found a common theme. First responders would get there. The, Officer would be at the hospital talking to the kid. The kid would say, it's my mom's live-in boyfriend. Here's where he's staying, here's where he works, and all that kind of stuff. They would write up their report. It would say, case turned over to special victims unit at MCSO. Nothing more on the case. I called my counterpart over in the sheriff's office. I said, you know, these cases that you sent back to us that said we could just file them away, they're all completed. Well, guess what, they're not. None of them had been worked. His response to me was, well, you know, just send them back to us and I'll make sure they get worked. And we said, no way. They didn't do it right back then. Why would they do it right this time around? When we started to go look for these kids, started looking for these victims, we kept finding vacant homes, homes had been boarded up, new people living there, phones and numbers had all been disconnected, no forwarding address, no, they haven't lived here in years, that sort of thing made it very frustrating for us because we knew we had evidence of crimes that we were not going to be able to solve. The vast majority of the cases that we looked at, the victims and or suspects, but mostly both had Hispanic names. Because we couldn't find most of them, I cannot comment on to whether or not they were illegal. But if you are here illegally, and you're the victim of a crime, you're not likely to complain about the police. And do I believe that the sheriff's office knew that and felt that and maybe even exploited it? Yes, I do. I do believe that they did do that. This came from high up in that organization not to investigate these crimes. We know that. We know that. We heard that from the people who were working there. Their resources were diverted elsewhere to the human smuggling, to other units instead of into the SVU where they were supposed to be. Hope that this never happens again. Uh, that, uh, uh, but sometimes in a large law enforcement agency, these situations occur. We found that MCSO engages in racial profiling of Latinos and unlawfully stops, detains, and arrests Latinos, all in violation of the Constitution and laws of the United States. We are also reviewing allegations that MCSO has failed to investigate a large number of sex crimes. At the same time, we are examining the alleged failure to provide adequate policing services in Latino communities. We are not talking about isolated incidents. We found discriminatory policing that was deeply rooted in the culture of the department and compounded by MCSO's penchant for retaliation against people who speak out against them.